Hello, I'm Steve Ryder and welcome back to Racing Weekly, a podcast and YouTube show in association with Odds Checker and Bet365. I'll be stepping in for Rishi Prasad this week, who's obviously still busy recording the Commonwealth Games. Um, and I'm, as always, joined next door by Sam Turner. How are you? I'm very well, mate. How are you? Yeah, very well. Good yeah. to have you on the show. Yeah, looking forward to being this side of the camera. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, for those who don't know, Steve, you know, produces our uh, running order and edits and all the stats and stuff that we need for produce half a decent show. So it's great to have you this side of the camera instead this week. Um, yeah, Rishi interviewing various illuminaries in Birmingham. Um, I haven't seen much of him. I thought I might see him for a meal one of the nights, but no, he's been too busy beavering away. Um, as I say, talking to various people, weightlifters, hockey players. Um, there's some emotional scenes down at the University of Birmingham as well uh, yeah. when the, the, the ladies won their, their gold medal. So he was right in amongst the thick of that, just where he wants to be. <laughs> and obviously with, with Rishi covering that, we obviously weren't recording last week. We obviously yeah. had the Goodwood Festival in that time. Um, what was kind of your highlight of that meeting? Oh, well, it had to be the Goodwood Cup, didn't it? I think that was the most extraordinary race I've seen for a while, to be honest. Um, had a bit of everything, great drama, um, and just a, just a terrific heat. And, and those who were present to see it, I think, were treated to an absolute you know, crackerjack of a race. Um, I, I must admit, I, I didn't get down to Goodwood that week, unfortunately. I was away on a family holiday, but you know, one or two parts of me were definitely wishing that I'd been there to see that live. I thought that was a, a terrific race, had a bit of everything. Um, you know, it was good that True Sham was allowed to take his chance as well. I think that certainly added to the prestige and the glamour and the glitz of the race. And we saw a brilliant finish, didn't we? And it was, that's a term that's a little bit overused, race for the ages. But it did feel a little bit like that with, with Kiprios and Stradivarius going head to head, True Sham in amongst it as well. And, and one or two others running really well, I thought. Yeah, it was great to see Stradivarius kind of put it all in at the finish and obviously yeah. get over that whole jockey scenario and, and kind mm. of proved at the end of the day that it doesn't really matter who's on his back. Really, no, does it? no, doesn't. Doesn't. We, and, you know, hopefully it won't be the last time we see him either. No, definitely. Uh, we also saw a couple of impressive performances. New London, we now have a new St. Ledger mm. favourite, won the Gordon Stakes in impressive style. The step up in triple definitely suit him. Uh, Nashua. Yeah. Winning the Nassau Stakes as yeah. well. It's just a bit of a shame we're not going to see her kind of take on the boys. They've said they're going to keep the Phillies route, but that's kind of understandable. It is understandable, but she stays in training next year, which is brilliant. You know, very sporting from Connections. Um, that was another Polish ride from, from Holly Doyle. Um, and New London, I mean, it's no wonder he was backed off the boards in that July, that handicap in the July meeting, was it? Because obviously he put up a brilliant speed figure to win the Gordon Stakes and yeah, all systems go for Doncaster for him. So they, they look to have some live horses for those uh, back end targets, don't they, Godolphin? Yeah, definitely. And we obviously had some, some good two-year-old winners as well. Royal Scotsman was probably the highlight of those for yeah. me in the Richmond Stakes. He looks as if he's going to the pre-morning where he could meet a horse I think we're going to touch on later in mm. the show in, in mm. Little Big Bear. So yeah, we'll move on to the first section of the show and that will be a racing recap. So I easily could spend the next 40 minutes just discussing Little Big Bear and no other races over, yeah. the, over the weekend. He was just exceptional. Seven length winner of the Phoenix States, giving Aidan O'Brien a 17th success in the race. Yeah, and his first since 2017, incredibly. Um, what, where do we start with Little Big Bear and put a bit of context on the performance? Well, the overall speed figure was virtually the fastest furlong for furlong on the card. And there was a strong card, wasn't there, at the current? Yeah. You know, you had Go Bears Go. Um, some good handicaps there. He did a faster sectional for the last three furlongs than the concluding five furlong handicapper with some grizzled handicappers. Um, a lot of people have put down that, you know, perhaps Persian Force was a bit disappointing off the back of his previous run. And maybe he was a touch, but the speed and the acceleration that Little Big Bear showed, you know, when Persian Force moved to his quarters and Ryan Moore's just gone, just woken him up, not even needing a recourse to the stick. And the horse has just lengthened away and accelerated absolutely incredibly, really. I thought it was the marquee performance of the weekend. I thought we saw some good performances up and down the country and across in Ireland through the weekend. But that was that was the star quality for me, Little Big Bear. And he's got a raft of entries now and could go anywhere from the Nunthorpe to the boat race, couldn't he? He could, yeah. That's, that's it. He looks all speed, doesn't he? Like mm. I said to you before recording, four, four to one favourite would bet three six five for the next year's 2,000 guineas. I wouldn't be in a rush to take that. I think he's all speed, personally. You yeah. kind of, you, the, the targets that are upcoming, you could go to the Nunthorpe, again, 5-1 to one with Bet365 for that race. You could go for the Morney over six in France mm. and, and, and tackle um, 
tackle Royal Scotsman. He could go Middle Park, Dewhurst. I mean, the mm. options are just wide open for him. What, what, what would you do with him? I, I think I think there's a danger if you go to, Num, to the Nunthorpe over five at York against some absolute trailblazers. You might just get him on his head a, a little bit. I'm not saying he wouldn't travel up, but if they want to treat him like a Guinness horse, that's going to be a difficult path to take for me. I think I would rather see the more orthodox route, you know, perhaps Dewar, something like that. Uh, maybe the, there's a national stakes over seven. You know, six and a half on Saturday, he got it strongly as well. Yeah. But those sectionals just tell you how much latent speed he's got, as well as the ability to travel well through a race. Um, and they're vital components. No doubt he's got a very good mind, as uh, every Ballador horse has that <laughs> wins a group one um, or a group race. So I, I think, you know, he's got all the components required to become a very, very talented three-year-old. He's already like a marquee two-year-old for me. I thought that was one of the best performances. I mean, Native Trail was very impressive when he was winning his two-year-old races in, in good style, but this lad just looks the real deal, doesn't he? He's got that push-button acceleration. He settles very well. Um, as I say, his temperament looks bomb-proof as well. And he beat good horses on Saturday. You know, they were really good horses. I know the Coventry Stakes winner, you know, created his own downfall in some respects, which was a shame, but... You know, the fact that he got back into the race was, was probably all credit to him, really. But he paid for it late on, didn't he? Yeah, obviously, you're, you're a fan of the sectionals. It kind of, me watching it without those, mm. Brad Sell missing the break, having to use that energy to get into it, it, it made Little Big Bear look more impressive yeah. to the eye, the last furlong of it. Yeah. Um, but the fact that the sectionals kind of back up that, exactly. it kind of shows everything, really, yeah, doesn't I it? Think they they not only enforce what a good performance it was from the winner, but they also give a little bit of an excuse to the runners-up and, and the third Chartash, you know, that they were trying to live with a horse that had not only tanked along for three furlongs, but then did the final three in, you know, roughly 33.88. Um, and when you think that Big Gossy, the, the, you know, gnarled old handicapper, won the last race over five furlongs, furlong less, older horse was doing 34.46, which was, you know, three to four lengths slower. Um, it's a tremendous performance, really. Incredible, really. It's good that the clock backs it up as well. Definitely. Uh, the beat of the horses, Brad Sell, Persian Force, and obviously Blackbeard, who is a non-runner on the day, do all hold entries for the gym crack um, mm -hmm. at York in, in a couple of weeks' time. So it'll be interesting what they do with kind of the beaten horses in there as well. Yeah, you hope that that situation at the stalls with Brad Sell, he was a bit slowly away, then stumbled. That's not going to be a recurring theme because we've seen, you know, with, with some high-profile horses, this year um, in group races, older horses, that once they start developing that trait, it's a very difficult one to, to try and expunge from their CV, really, and, and, and their makeup. So hopefully he'll, he'll sort of get back on track, so to speak, next time we see him. He's certainly too early to, to write him off as a horse because he looked tremendously impressive in the Coventry and that race has worked out nearly as well as the Windsor Castle. Earlier on the card, we had the, the Phoenix Sprint Stakes. We saw Go Bears Go winning the Group 3 contest for David Lochnane and Russell Ryan. First time cheat pieces, they seem to help a lot. They did, yeah. I was really disappointed in this horse in the Commonwealth Cup. Um, having fancied him quite strongly, got plenty of Ascot form going into it. I thought he ran well at Haydock in the Sandy Lane, um, you know, from, from a bad draw and a bad position on the track. And he just didn't shine for whatever reason. But there was a few of the Lochnane horses that just dipped a little bit Royal Ascot week. But great to see him bounce back. Um, really did find plenty off the bridle, didn't he, from halfway. and. Yeah. You know, stretched out really well. Um, his sectional was was very comparable to Little Big Bear, um, but I, I'd take that more as a positive for the latter rather than the former, um, because he's only two uh, and made a lot of the running himself. And you know, Go Bears Go is a more experienced horse. He'd been to America, and he's probably going to go back there, isn't he? Yeah. So yeah, finished second in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Sprint last year. It would be the the obvious mm. target, wouldn't it, mm. for for later on in the year? They'd yeah. Great that he's been revitalised with the cheap pieces on, because he was a talent that looked as though it was not going to be realised really this year, didn't he? And I wondered whether he'd fully trained on, but yes, that certainly concentrated his mind and was a catalyst to a much better performance on Saturday. Yeah, it wasn't only Ireland where we had some good racing. Mm. Um, obviously over in the UK we did mm. as well. Rose of Lancaster States, the performance, arguably the second most impressive performance <laughs> of the week would come from Anne Mark. Step the took up in, uh, yeah. step up in class the, to group three level kind of in his stride. Certainly the most impressive older horse performance, wasn't it, Anne Mark? The way that he sauntered through that race at Haydock, I mean, like he jumped in the bottom of the straight, wasn't yeah. it? And there were good horses in behind him. A grocer Jack had destroyed them at Newby when well back time before. Um, and Amnat, just just the, the cruising speed and the level of quality of performance was astonishing, really. And the clock backed it up as well. It really was a very smart figure. Um, is he the new Hookham? 
I don't know, maybe he's got a little bit more speed than Hook, a bit more natural speed, but that was over the extended 10 and a half. Um, and brilliant for Owen Burrows as well. We'll touch yeah. on the, um, the the race in France yesterday, um, a little bit later on, but obviously Minzar ran very well there. Um, he's had a really tough season with Hook and obviously on the sideline after that Coronation Stakes win. But, you know, unearthing horses like Anne, Anne Matt, who won the John Smiths really well, and that race is working out exceptionally yeah. well, by the way. Uh, I think three out of the first four have won out the race, and the fifth brilliant light should have won at Goodwood. A bit unlucky in that handicap. Yeah. So I think he's got a really, really talented horse to go to war with. And good as well that he didn't just get him right for, for York, and then he's bounced off the back of it. He's produced an even better performance at Haydock. Yeah, it definitely. Aaron Burrows has come out in an interview afterwards and said that it did surprise him slightly. Yeah. Um, you said it's a nice story of the race with it being Owen Burrows. It's a nice story of the race for Shadwell as well. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he comes from, from Ortad. Yes. Um, who yes. was obviously a fantastic horse for them. Um, yeah, he's definitely going to be the highest rated, rated offspring of Ortad so far in this. Yeah, and it's, it's wonder what you do with him, really. Obviously, you know, he's not going to run over Judmont with Baid entering there, but there are some really nice races for him at the back end. You know, the Irish champion might be a race for him. Um, and interestingly, uh, although he coped with the fast ground really well on the Naismar, Jim Crowley, I think, felt that the little bit of juice in the ground at Haydock certainly suited him. So that opens up one or two different pathways that it can take. Yeah, certainly did with his sire as well. Yes, L for sure. Loved ground, didn't he, all time? For sure. Uh, across at Newmarket, we had the Sweet Solera Stakes, uh, Lakota Sioux. <laughs> She's amazing, <laughs> isn't she? She's, the, the, she's a funny one, that's for sure. Flash in the tail. I've never, yeah. ever seen a horse still go forward when no. flash in the tail. It's like a propeller. No, and you, you look at the bare level of the form and the fact that you could throw a horse blanket over the first four home, but it didn't look like being that, did it? As, as she's hit the rise, she looked as though she was going to stretch clear of them. And she's obviously just pulled herself up a little bit in front. She had to have a couple of cracks. She weaved around a bit. Um, and the rider just, just really had to keep her up to her work, didn't she? I'm not sure about the quality of the race, but fourth time the Johnstons have won it in the last 10 years. Um, looks some good opportunities for her, the May Hill, um, you know, the Rockfell, those sort of races you would think would be on the agenda for, for a filly like her. And you know, she gave the Chesham Stakes a, a welcome boost really as well, didn't she? Yeah, needed it. Um, yeah, it, it was interesting the head on. I hadn't quite realised how much she'd veered across no. the course until, I, until, until I'd seen it. But James Doyle kind of had to stop riding for part of it to straighten yes. her up. So yes. it kind of just further cements that it was a, it was a good performance. In yeah, the there's two ways of looking at that, isn't it? There's, there's A, that you've got an extremely talented filly that you, you think, well, you know, she can afford to do that and still win. And then there's the flip side of it that you just hope the temperament doesn't overtake her and she's going to be, you know, uh, she's going to be a quality filly that doesn't quite realise her potential because of what's between her ears. Yeah. Um, hopefully it's the former, really. But I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of headgear go on her at some stage in her career. No, it wouldn't, would mm. it? Not with, not, not with that tail pushing no. anyway. Uh, we touched on, obviously, the action in, in Sunday in France. Yeah. Bring Morris de Guise, Highfield Princess. Wow, what, what a story. What a story. I mean, I, I wrote down a couple of stats. She, she won a race, the first race two years ago this month. Well, sorry, September. At air, off a mark of 58. And her mark's nearly doubled in two years. Yeah. She's like, she's 112 now. Um, absolutely astonishing. Um, Brilliantly versatile mare, aggressively campaigned as well. Yeah. I think John and Sean Quinn and the team there have done a brilliant job with her. That goes without saying. Half a million in prize money. Um, she's winning on All Weather Finals Day. Of course, that seems a lifetime ago, doesn't <laughs> it? Um, she won the Duke of York, obviously, over six. She won All Weather Finals Day, stiff seven, Newcastle. And then she's you know, going to win in France as well. And they've got some ambitious plans for her at the back end of the season as well, haven't they? Yeah, definitely. So, so looking at the quotes afterwards, uh, she's in the Nunthorpe, she's in the Haydock Sprint Cup, but the plan, according to Connections at the moment, is to go to the Flying Five at the Curra, as it's a win and you're in race, um, where she will then be heading to the Breeders' Cup on turf, oh, on dirt, uh, which is a Phillies only uh, race over a five and a half furlongs. I mean, I'm not a massive Breeders' Cup guy no. and dirt race fan, mm. but she's quick out of the gates. Yeah, she's a prominent racer. Yeah, that should suit. Her. Yeah, yeah, she's very. I mean, she ran over over the five at Wolverhampton, did she? Which is one you know really on the collar there, and it, it's you've got you've got to hit the gates and you've you've got to get away. I mean, it's different from running in America because they show unbelievable gate speed, yeah. don't they? There's, there's a bit of a difference being quickly away here as of being quickly away over there. But you know, she's got that versatility. She stays well as well. Um, she's obviously got a great unison and synchronicity with Jason Hart, who was winning his first Group 1, yeah. which was brilliant after a few near misses. El Astronauti, etc. Um, he's 8 from 20 on her now as well, I think. So all ground comes alike to her. As I say, 
you know, anywhere between five and seven furlongs. And you know, the last two years have been incredible. They've done a brilliant job with it. I had a, I had a small share in a juvenile hurdler with, with John Quinn, uh, who obviously trains those brilliantly. He had a really yeah. good run, didn't he? Obviously, Triumph Hurdle winners, etc. We finished fifth in the Triumph. It was, um, wasn't a bad Triumph. It was that horse that kept winning the Grand National, wasn't it? Now, you might remember the name, Gordon Elliott's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so it just shows what a, what a brilliant operation they are, really, that they can, they can win Group 1s on the flat in France and they can win Triumph Hurdles. I mean, they've just been a fantastic training operation for the last 20, 30 years. Yeah, absolute credit connections. Yeah, you, you'd absolutely love to, mm. to own a mare like her. Yes. Uh, we'll touch on the Shergar Cup a bit later on in talking topics. Yeah. But some, some nice performances. It was a good meeting. Um, yes. Great Britain and Ireland um, ended up obviously winning the event. Jamie Spencer, Neil yeah. Callum, both, both securing doubles on the yeah, cast. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I didn't catch a lot of it, if I'm honest, um, but that doesn't mean to say I'm against it. I think it's got its place, place in the calendar. It's well received. Ascot, they found a good home for it. Um, and those that get involved in it, you know, week in, uh, sorry, year in, year out, um, really find it very rewarding. Obviously, Hayley Turner's had some exceptional success at the meeting. Emma Jane Wilson, I think her enthusiasm and exuberance comes across uh, and helps to sell the day, really. So I think it's, I think it's a good day, well marketed. Yeah, definitely. Hayley Turner winning for a record ninth time at the Shogar Cup on Manacan. And, and like you said, Amy Jane Wilson, she just loves it, doesn't she? She does. There's, she a, does. there's a video on social media of her cheering home, Hayley, obviously yeah. winning um, with the ITV guys it's, yeah, it's just it's great team, to see. team racing done very well that is, yeah, it is. Um, we might touch on that a little bit later on definitely <laughs> um, other performances to note over the weekend uh, Mr McCann won at Haydock uh, owned by a group of Liverpool footballers yes. the likes of Jordan Henderson and uh, James Milner Andy Robertson that was, should have cheered them up a bit after the Fulham result <laughs> yeah I didn't catch a lot <laughs> of that either but uh, they were indebted to Mo Salah perhaps they should give him a free share in it to be honest but uh, yeah Mr McCann um, did it, did it quite nicely, but probably quite low down on the horses to follow, given the weekend that we had, I suppose. Yeah. One other performance that took my eye, I'm not sure if you caught that, Bright Diamond won the opener at Newmarket. Yeah. It's Carl Burke's two-year-olds are well known for kind of stepping forward for that first run, but one by ten lengths. I know it was a kind of a newcomer's race, but mm -hmm. it looked a good race on paper with pedigrees. She, she could be a really going places next oh, year. She's just had an unbelievable season, hasn't he? Yeah. Carl Burke, absolutely incredible. Really from, from the get-go, really from the early spring, um, starting off with the two-year-olds and how they've progressed through the year and obviously has had plenty of success with the older horses as well. But, you know, it just seems to unveil these juveniles almost on a weekly basis that go and win their, their maidens, whether it be Haydock, Newmarket, whatever. So, no, they've done brilliantly. Yeah. Anything else to note over the weekend that you want to touch on? No, not a lot, really. I think we've covered most of it. Um, you know, we've, we've got one or two things to talk about later on, haven't we, in talking topics. But no, I was, I was, as I say, very taken with Little Big Bear. I thought that was just an exceptional performance. You know, people don't need me to tell them that, but at least we've put a bit of context on with the figures. Um, and I think, and Matt, I think he's definitely booked for, I don't know, that was a Group 3 Saturday, but I think he can, I think he can win at the top level. If those numbers that he's doing at the moment um, can be improved upon or even just, you know, replicated in, in other in other races then I think he'll be very dangerous horses with that traveling speed uh, especially given the time figure that he managed to produce horses that can lay up off that pace and there was a good gallop on at Haydock you know providing the distances were right I think he'll be paying you know paying his way going forward yeah definitely exciting horse to go forward before we start the weekend preview uh, just a, an offer from bet 365 that I'd like to let Listeners and watchers know, um, if you back a winner at four to one or more in a live ITV race, place a bet on the next live ITV race and get your money back if it loses. Up to £50, new and eligible customers only and terms and conditions apply. So it'll be one of the harder weekends to kind of have a look at. Obviously, yes. uh, we've got York the week after. Yeah. Um, so a lot of the, the action's kind of gearing around there. But we've got some, some group races to, to touch on. Hungerford Stakes, Group 2 over 7 furlongs mm. um, at Newbury. Um, yeah. yeah, we've obviously then looks a bit of a rerun of the Lennox Stakes from, from Goodwood by the look of the entries. Yeah, it could do, couldn't it? Uh, there's, a, there's three or four of them all looking to, to meet again. Um, as usual with these races, there's, there's not often a, a very much a, a standout horse. There was a couple that caught my eye a little bit. I, I'm not sure whether Happy Romance would you know, fully get the seven at Newbury, if I'm honest. Um, she's got some very good form here. And you know, she just looks as though she might be one of those sort of betwixt and between horses. But I think she's run better than 
her form figures suggest from a couple of poor draws. Um, certainly in the July Cup, I thought she ran yeah. fairly well, as well as could be expected from where she was drawn. Obviously, she's got plenty of form here as well. She's won the, the Hackwood Sprint here. She's won the Super Sprint at Newbury as well. I didn't think she ran too bad in, in this year's renewal of the Hackwood, which featured Minzal, Rohan, Go Bears Go. You know, it was a pretty decent renewal. So I thought she might be one that would be interested at a big price. And Muta Sarbeck is another one that I've been waiting to run over seven furlongs. Um, I don't think, well, I'm pretty sure that he didn't go to Goodwood. He was entered, I think, in the mile there. Um, and they didn't run him in the Lennox in the end. So hopefully they've saved him for this. But you've only got to look at his stats, really, that he's not from five over a mile. I know he's Richie's favourite horse <laughs> in training. Uh, he gets seduced by him all the time. But he also travels up and just doesn't always find as much over the mile as you think he's going to. So four from five over seven furlongs. And his only poor run over that trip has come in the Jersey Stakes on soft ground. So I think this looks an ideal opportunity for him, especially with Charlie Hills's Horse is running pretty well at the moment. Yeah, you touch on the seven furlongs. It is a bit mm. of a specialist trip, isn't it? Mm. You get horses going up from six and down from a mile. I thought Sandrine really benefited from the drop back yes. in trip yes. from a mile to seven furlongs last time when she won the Lennox Stakes. Um, yeah, she'd ran three times over a mile this year. Yeah. Yes, they're in better company. Yeah. Um, but yeah, seemed to kind of relish that drop to seven furlongs. Um, she'll get a three pound penalty, mostly yeah. for that group two success. Um, which will obviously make things harder in this race. Yes. Um, but I did think she'd kind of probably, obviously she'll be towards the top of the end of the mm. market, but mm. I did think she'd kind of be a worthy favourite yeah, if I was sure. pricing it. For sure. She comes in good, good heart, and as you say, she saw the seven out really well. The other one that I quite liked as well was, was light infantry, but I just wonder if the ground's going to be soft enough. Yeah. Just wants a bit of cut in the ground, doesn't he? Uh, but obviously second to Tenebrism when we last saw him. Um, came, we finished off well from a very un, uh, uncompromising position. He's the type of horse, I think, for the back end, he's going to win a nice race, I think, when the, the ground does ease. But no sign of that this week, there is There isn't, is there? It's supposed no. to be glorious next week. So, uh, A couple of other races to touch on over in Ireland. Uh, at the Curry, you've got the Royal Whip Stakes, uh, Group 3 over a mile and two. Um, interesting in looking at this. Won the previous three years by three-year-olds. Obviously, we've got a host of entries in this. No prices currently. Was there any that took your eye for it? Uh, I've got to be honest. You probably spent more time looking at this than me. I wondered whether Gear Up, who's got a couple of entries this week, might might run in this or the, the Mile 6, the St. Uh, St. Ledger Trial, the Irish St. Ledger Trial. Um, but no, it, it you know with 30 or 40 in and a lots of horses having multiple entries and representing three or four stables, it, yeah. I thought it was... I thought it was difficult to try and get an angle as to what you thought might run and what wouldn't run. Um, Luxembourg's coming back soon, isn't he? It's not this weekend, is it? No, no, it shouldn't be for this one. Um, but yeah, he is on the on the mm. road back. He's going to be a really interesting horse for the back end of the season, isn't Very he? Very much Obviously, so, yeah. That Very mile so. trip looked looked a bit short for him in the in the 2000 guineas. So, yes. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was the big derby hope at one stage. But that Irish St. Ledger looks a good race, doesn't it? I mean, there's, you know, I, I think I bear in mind that whatever... Paddy Toomey runs in it, you know, given the season that he's had, he's, he looks like he's got a couple of entries. I think Earl of Tyrone was earmarked for this after winning last time, so he'd probably be quite close to the top of my shortlist. Yeah. Um, Royal Whip States, there was one that took my eye, I thought could be quite a big prize, that was Insinuendo. We haven't, that's right. for Willie McCreary, we haven't seen her. She pushed Mother Earth mm -hmm. to within, within a length um, in a Group 3 on her return. Obviously, he's been been missed since um but yeah if you push a classic winner to yeah to within half a length on your reappearance Absolutely. that was a group three so she obviously hasn't got a penalty i thought she could she could outrun her rods um which i imagine will be will be quite generous given yes. given the entry stage at the moment i was st ledger trial the one that took my eye was changing of the guard mm -hmm. uh, for aiden o'brien aiden has a great record in this so he's mm. won this eight times three in a row helped by uh, order of st george but yeah, changing of the guard. We haven't seen him since he won the King Edward at Royal Ascot. Mm. He looks like he could cry out for this yeah, trip. Absolutely. The mile and a half is definitely the bare minimum you'd want for him. Yes. So I thought this step up in trip to a mile and six could suit him. Yeah, tailor made for him, isn't it? This test as well, you know, obviously a track as well that suits front runners and horses that race prominently, especially with the ground that we'd like to get the weekend. Should be absolutely ideal for him. Be interested to see how many take up the chance. I mean, obviously, Charlie Appleby's got Rebels Romance in there. You know, whether he'd be backing up again so quickly after Goodwood, I don't know. But um, certainly got the entry anyway. As yeah. I say, keep an eye on Earl of Tyrone. He runs the track really well. And Paddy Toomey, has got a number of entries in the race. Whichever takes his chance would be, would be very interesting for me. Definitely. A few to note then. Obviously, no prices. And we haven't got the, the next entry stage at that point. So hopefully we've pointed you to a couple of runners and maybe some that could outrun their rods. Right. Next part, around yes. talking topics. Yes, indeed.
So this weekend just gone, obviously we've had the Shergar Cup. A lot of racing aficionados mm. are either positive or negative about the event. The same kind of applies to, to the racing league that launched last year. Mm. Maybe didn't go as well as they'd hoped. There's been a few changes that we've made to it. Horse racing, we are trying to increase the popularity of the sport. Do yeah. you think events like this is actually helping? Um, I'm old enough, you're probably not, to remember when the uh, Shergar Cup w was, was brought in uh, and its inception. And there was, mm, I'd say, there was a pretty cold response to those early Shergar Cups. They weren't welcome with open arms. It was a new thing, um, but it's, I think it's built its place in the calendar now and I think it's established itself and it's been refined and they've found a system and a formula that seems to work well. It's a good family day as well. Um, and they, they found a really good venue for it, Ascot. It's, it, it just suits, and it, obviously the good weather at the weekend certainly helps, you know, if it's miserable. I haven't seen the crowd figures. I haven't seen the crowd figures for the first um, fixture of the, the Racing League. They haven't been published yet, so we don't know. But the Racing League averaged like 2,000 attendants uh, for each of its meetings last year. It wasn't particularly popular. Um, I think there was 60-odd thousand watched it on television. Now ITV have got it this year, so that will help. Um, I didn't see the first show, unfortunately, I was away on holiday, so I couldn't pass comment on, on how that was produced and, and shown. But, you know, I think these things take a little bit of time to bed in. I, I don't want to damn it too early. It's not necessarily for me, but I think changing to regional teams, I think that helps because that gives something people to identify with. Yeah. I mean, I do think something like this might suit, you know, the top 10 Premier League teams from last year and, and, and do those, but that probably would be a bit too marginalising of, of the teams. But the, but the regional is a, good, is a good opportunity for people to get behind their area, so to speak. You've obviously got some quite vocal uh, and popular captains, and one or two that aren't, and, you know, hopefully they're going to publicise and market it well. There's only another five meetings. They're all on ITV4, which I think is a massive positive for the sport. Yeah. The price money has been increased by 200,000 to 2 million, which is a sizable pot, really. Yeah. Um, there are positives and negatives. I, uh, one thing I didn't like was in last year's race, uh, last week's race car at Doncaster, the owners' names were replaced um, with the team names. So if you're paying to have your horse in training, you should have your name in the race car, yeah. I think, at the very least. And I can understand why some owners feel as though they've been marginalised a bit, because obviously you, your silks get cast to one side, but the payoff is that you, you're competing for good Fantastic prize money. Prize, yeah. yeah. I'm not as negative about it as, as some, but that doesn't mean to say that I've really bought into it because I'm not sure that team racing is particularly well suited to, to racing, horse racing. No, and I, I agree with a lot of what you've said. I, I like the changes that they've made. The mm. sponsored teams was, wasn't great last year. The seven regional teams is definitely a positive. Yes. Um, there isn't a huge amount of meetings. I think the big positive is around the jockeys. The jockey situation was slightly suspect last year. The likes of Frankie Tatori ended up being signed up for the event and then riding elsewhere when well, the Lachine meetings Murphy were never rode the event and no. he was on one of the teams. No, you know, exactly. and that, That's understandable with their commitments, but we can't, you can't sell them as being part of it and, and then them not turn up, can you? It's like, say, oh, right, I've got tickets for... You know, Manchester United versus Manchester City. I'm hoping to see De Bruyne and all the stars, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, this weekend. And and you know, none of them Never play. You, you, you're obviously left disappointed, aren't you? And if that's how it's been marketed, come and see Frankie de Tori, come and see champion jockey Sheen Murphy, and that neither of them are there. It's a bit of a letdown for people, really. Yeah, I think the main thing around these, a lot of parts around horse racing at the moment, is to try and increase prize, prize money, get good field sizes, mm. and both events, you know, you're going to get that. Yeah, although it didn't fill totally, did it, the first the first night at Doncaster, unfortunately, with, with field sizes, which is another disappointment, really. Um, yeah, I think I think we'll see how this, this one plays out, because they have refined it, and it, it is improved, and it is going to be on terrestrial television. I mean, ITV, you know, whether you love the coverage or whether you don't love the coverage, you know, they are fantastic for racing. I mean, racing would pay to have its its racing shown or its sport shown on uh, terrestrial television. It, it does wonders for the levy. I don't know what the levy figures were like from last week. I'm not sure that they've, they've fully come in yet either. So there are a few details, fine details that we're waiting for before we can fully judge whether it's a success or not. And I suppose you've got to see the other meetings at Lingfield, Newcastle, Windsor, Sutherland, Newcastle, all the way up to the 15th of September before we can judge it. But let's, let's hope 
people get engaged with it. You know, yeah. we do need that. I thought the coverage on the telly was great. The likes of Matt Chapman, Kevin Blake, Leona May. Yes. It's always going to come across well. They're great yeah. talkers of the sport. They are. So. They, you know, and as you said, they all work together for ITV. They're all, um, they're all captains of their respective regions as well. So that there's a yeah, there's at least there's a little bit of uh, previous there, isn't it? And they can, you know, there's there's good relationships between them, and they all all get involved. We have got Mick Quinn who's involved as well. Obviously, yeah. he's going to give it plenty. Linda Perrett, who we should touch on actually, for performances of the week, five straight winners, absolutely yeah. incredible. She's had a wonderful week. So good luck to her. Rupert Bell from Talk Sport as well. So yeah, there's. Um, Along with Jamie Osborne, there's, there's plenty of characters and personalities involved, isn't there? Yeah, definitely. I don't know about you, silks in both events, I still find it yeah. quite difficult to decipher yeah. which horse I'm, I'm yeah. actually trying to cheer on. And that's, my and that's problem with from it. someone yeah. that's an experienced race watcher. Yeah. That's the only thing with these events is if you're trying to kind of uh, get people in that don't like the sport, for them, to an untrained eye, you look at a Godolphin cap and you know it's going to go blue, then white, then red. Yes. Fine, but I, I even I found it difficult. I agree. With I agree. I watched the race at Ascot on Saturday, and you know it was the race with Super Super Jack in, and you know you almost, if you tune in halfway through, you forget that it's a team event, and you, you're almost looking because you, your brain is trained to look for Super Super Jack's colours, and you've seen him run at Goodwood where he was unlucky, and various other places at Ascot. Uh, and you, you're trying to pick him up, and I picked up totally the wrong horse for about, yeah. you know, a furlong. I was like, what am I doing? So it's, um, it is difficult, really, and I, I'm not sure they've actually nailed that part. They, they've tried to make the silks quite sort of sexy and quite, you know, 2022, and, uh, and I wonder whether it wouldn't be better to go back to basics, really, and have very plain colours that really stand out, and, and you can actually work out, because I think some of them morph into each other a little bit during 35, 40 mile an hour yeah. races. How the commentators cope, I'll never know. I mean, fair play to them. Yeah. Um, Tough job, that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, as a punter, I, I quite liked the Shergar Cup as an event. Yeah. I think it's quite a good one with, with jockeys that don't ride the track too often. You can kind of try and get an angle out of there. I mean, it didn't yeah. work for me. I was quite confident on Isla Kai. I thought, yeah. brilliant Ascot form. Yes. Frankie Dettorion, he'll be able to use his knowledge of, yeah. of Ascot, but set two stronger fractions and ended up mm. setting up perfectly for, for Emma Jane Wilson to swoop late on Jungle yeah. Co. So it doesn't always work. No, I think that's why Hayley Turner, who rides Ascot really well and seems to have a very good affinity, certainly on the Charlie Fellows horses on the straight course, you know, that's why she's had nine winners there. She she just seems to really buy into how, how to ride that track. And obviously Jamie Spencer the same. He enjoyed good success over the weekend. Neil Callan as well, sort of re... Reborn, isn't he, as a, yeah. as a UK-based jockey now, after so many years in Hong Kong, 10 years in Hong Kong, where you know they ride very tight over there. And I think Neil's brought that ethos over to this country. He doesn't give much of a, an inch no. uh, during a race, according to his um, counterparts in the weighing room. So, yeah, I mean, that, that it's, I think it's a good showcase for them as well. You know, people who perhaps haven't got big retainers with, with some stables, they are a little bit more freelance, they're a little bit more free and easy where they can go, they can commit to the Shergar Cup. And I think you see the same people, you know, year in, year out, you know, riding in those events. You know, Jamie's always there, Hayley, um, you know, and there'll be, um, you know, plenty of people who'll be pleased to see Emma Jane Wilson back. And we've had plenty of other, you know, top class jockeys from around the world riding at that meeting as well. It's a brilliant showcase for the, for the sport. Yeah, it really is. There's a couple of other bits to talk around. Um, BHA restricting, well, <laughs> handicap entries of, of the Irish in, in Class 5 contests or below. Yeah, yeah um, I think that's, it's their jurisdiction. It's well within whatever they want to do. And, you know, it's not going to find um, a, a lot of favour with the likes of Johnny Levins, perhaps, or Rona McNally or whatever. But I think, you know, perhaps British trainers and the BHA have colluded together and they just got sick of horses that have been clearly jobbed up. I don't think it does the sport any good, yeah. if I'm honest. You have something that gets back from 10 to 1 to 4 to 6 and wins by half the track. You see it in an island a bit. You see it over here a bit as well, to be honest. Um, I think if, you know, the Irish trainers should perhaps, you know, perhaps target their ire and anger on the horse racing island and get them to put some poor meetings on low-grade racing and you can go win those lads. Yeah. The only bit I thought was slightly disappointing was the BHA's kind of statement on it saying that, that the field sizes were the excuse for it and low grade handicaps were the least troubling area of the program book, which was the justification. I wasn't yeah. quite sure that was the best wording I, of it. I've seen 
plenty of single figure low grade handicaps you know five six seven runners basically because people don't want to run for bad prize money you know at a track that they don't particularly like so uh, i'm not sure that would be the justification for me i think more the justification is that they you know they don't want to have their pants pulled down by some irish job horse basically without putting too fine a point on it yeah definitely and then the other bit of news was the extended sponsorship of potemps um yeah. for a further three years but they have changed the qualification. No, I've missed this story. You could tell, tell me more about this story. I've missed this story. So they've extended sponsorship. However, previously you only had to be finishing in the first sixth yeah. um, in a Potemps qualifier in order to then get into the final. They've now done that, so you have to finish first four Brilliant. in a qualifier. I mean, yeah. it's definitely aimed at improving competitiveness yeah. of that and yes. the field sizes of and a qualifying contest. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we had a seven runner, I think I was at Warwick last year, we had a seven runner qualifier, uh, and obviously- That was, <laughs> was where Cider Burley qualified, it, didn't exactly, it? With yeah. a hack around the back. Yeah, who could finish sixth, basically, yeah. was, the, was the order of the day. And you see that, obviously, in the Irish qualifier as well at Leopardstown, yeah. you know, they just ride for sixth. That can't be healthy, really. If At least if you're riding for fourth, and you get plenty of runners, there's, there's an each way perspective there for punters and they know what they're going to get for their money, hopefully. I mean, I, I think if you're betting per temps qualifiers, you, you're sort of, <laughs> it's for the needy and greedy really, isn't it, in some respects. But at least I think with the first four, I think that's a good, that's a good inception, that. Yeah, I ran some stats on it. Two of the last 20 winners of the potential final at Cheltenham uh, were only winners of a qualifier. So 18 really? of the 20 mm. had either finished second to sixth. Yeah. in order to qualify that kind of says it all really yeah i'd be interested to know where, where, the, where the two came from or which which qualifiers they yeah. won yeah. i wouldn't have thought it'd be leopardstone or no. warwick no it wasn't um, it might well have been one of those cheltenham ones probably yeah, yeah finishing down the field mm. yeah a couple of changes obviously yeah people are gonna have to to work out where they want to run in order to qualify <laughs> well, the likes have to run a bit straighter that's it you know that can't be a bad thing for the sport can it no Definitely um, not. Just show your hand. I mean, I think people treat the handicappers as if they're complete fools these days. These are smart men who, you know, they watch a lot of racing and, you know, they know the time of day and they know what people are trying to do. You know, it's not like 40, 50 years ago where you're trying to engineer a bit of a coup. I think they can see th between the lines a little bit, some of these guys. Yeah, the, the changes to the qualifications has obviously has come a long way. I think mm. you only had to declare for a race yeah, yeah. Um, in order to get into the final previously. So it is it is moving forward. And I think yeah, the change to being finishing in the first four is definitely the right way to yeah. go. I seem to remember there was a there was a real danger with with one of the meetings being called off the one year was <laughs> I think they had something like thirty five declarations Declared. and and obviously it was off but yeah they all got a, they all got a pass into the into the race if they qualified or not yeah I watched a, an interesting part with Lydia Hislop she's saying that that you should only get the place terms or the finishing parts of the place terms if there was only seven runners only the first two should qualify yeah and it should be doing, done to that as yes. opposed to actually the field size but I suppose you are going to get more horses running in these contests. If you finish fifth in a qualifier mm -hmm. now, you've got to go back to the next qualifier in order to try and do it. Absolutely. So I think field size is obviously willing. Absolutely. And hopefully that, you know, the final will be a fairer, um, a fairer race for people that have shown their hand a little bit more because there are some trainers who, who do show their hand before Christmas. You know, they, they want to win races before Christmas. I think Paul Nichols for a start, you know, he, he gets to Cheltenham and all these horses are very, very poorly handicapped because he's been winning races up to that point. There's other trainers who do it in reverse. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's fine, that's, that's up to them. But um, yeah, I think this is a better initiative. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode of Racing Weekly, brought to you by Odds Checker in association with Bet365. Me, thanks as usual. Sam Turner sat on my left. Cheers, Thanks for looking after me today. Ah, oh, you've done brilliant, mate. Well done. <laughs> well done. You'll be interviewing hockey players and weightlifters before you know it. <laughs> uh, as always, if you like what you've heard or listened on this uh, or any of our previous episodes, then please leave us a kind review on Apple Podcasts or in the comments section on YouTube. We'll be back next week where Rishi will be back in this seat, joined by Sam and also Nick Goff to preview York's Ebor Festival. Mm -hmm.